<laughs> Some people say I had a charmed life. I remember. My family loved me. We lived in a nice house. I had everything I wanted. So I guess maybe my life was like a fairy tale. Until a monster stole my happy ending. And nobody knows who he is but me. I don't think anyone is ever really ready to die. At 19, I sure wasn't. The uh, day Allie was born, it was the happiest and I felt the luckiest day of my life. And I called her princess. was his little princess, you know, um, a princess in the most beautiful way because she was so kind and so sweet. She adored her parents. I had big plans for my life. Finish college, travel the world. There was so much I wanted to see and do. We'd felt for years that Allie was going to make a difference in this world. But when I came home for summer after my freshman year in college, no idea it would be the last summer of my life. Allie and her two younger brothers all worked at the local neighborhood swimming pool. On June 18th, it was kind of cloudy and overcast, and there wasn't really anyone at the pool. The sun was a coward that day. It just didn't want to come out after the morning rain. Funny though, you'd never think that just because the sky is gloomy, it means you're going to die. She made a phone call at approximately 2.50. And then uh, at approximately 3.15, a friend shows up. Our friend couldn't find her, but she saw somebody leaving. She sees a, a white male leave the pool area. Um, and he waves at her, she waves at him, and she went ahead and left. She left thinking that stranger was a friend. He even smiled and waved at her. But how could she know that evil can look so normal? Approximately five o'clock, Allie's brother came to relieve her. And when he got there, her phone was still on the, the table. Allie's brother's concerned she's not there. He can't find Allie anywhere. So he calls his father, Roger. Roger lived about a mile away. So he came. They looked all over. I looked in the shallow end of the pool. Deep end looked in the bottom. Uh, I looked out over the grounds. I was lost for a while, floating in the darkness. I knew my dad would come find his little princess, and he did. I walked into the pump room, and I almost turned around to walk out, and then I looked down. Uh, I saw a leg sticking out from underneath the tarp. I threw the, uh, the tarp off, and uh, it was Allie. I rolled her over. She'd been uh, beaten uh, badly. She was black and blue all over her body. When uh, medical and police got there, Roger was trying to keep her alive. I told Allie she needed to fight through it. Well, she needed to be conscious and uh, come back to me. When I'm in the pool, I like to let the water gently rock me. Just like when I was a baby, and my daddy would rock me to sleep. Only now he's rocking me for a different reason. It was very evident that uh, Allie had tried to fight her attacker, and she had several injuries to her fingers. She had blunt force trauma to her face and the back of her head. far away, away from my broken body, 
and away from everyone I loved. For me, the pain was over, but for those left behind, it was just beginning. Our hearts were broken beyond what anyone could ever imagine. It's just the most awful feeling in the whole world. It was a difficult investigation personally because all of us have kids. We wanted to get this guy so bad. My killer is running now, moving fast so no one will notice the blood on his hands. But he left a little something of himself behind. Crime scene investigators processed everything in the pump room. There were uh, obvious signs of a struggle. There was also from a first aid kit that had been spilled open, uh, a tube of uh, antibiotic ointment that was found on each side of her body. It had some blood on the very uh, end of the cap, which proved to be a crucial piece of evidence for us. We received DNA from the killer on both the cap and the tube itself. The place where I was murdered is marked with my blood. My killer's blood is there too. He thinks he can get away with murder, but he's wrong. While I was busy going to college and hanging out with my friends, I never once thought the clock was ticking. Still, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't change a thing. Except now I know that evil is as real as death. A friend said, Allie's been murdered. She was at the pool working. Someone came up and um, attacked her, and she's gone. We are just terrified. I mean, this person is still out there, and it was a horrible, horrible nightmare. Your mind runs everywhere. Who was it? You know, how could this happen? Who could have done something like this? How are you going to ever get this uh, predator tracked down? It's hard to think that someone from my own town would want to hurt me. But that's what happened. And now investigators have to figure out why. It looked like it was going to be a stranger homicide. At that point, we knew that there was a killer amongst us who was on the loose. Oftentimes, these killers, they, they've, they've led a life of crime. We were hopeful that we would get a DNA hit. We did not. So we knew we had to hit the streets and start talking to people. Of all my friends, I was the safety conscious one. I wouldn't let anyone walk to their car alone in the dark. But now, it's time for one of my friends to look out for me. She's seen my killer's face. He even waved at her. And she's the only one who can tell the police what he looks like. Our friend that had seen him was whisked away to go talk with detectives and do a composite of this person that she saw. The composite wasn't a good composite. Her friend was uh, pretty traumatized by what had occurred. It's hard to imagine what the face of a cold-hearted killer looks like. Sometimes it takes a little help from a stranger who understands. One of the reasons that this case really interested me is because I had been a police composite artist for many years. And when I saw this beautiful girl's face come on the news, and I saw Mr. Kemp come on talking about his daughter, it just broke my heart. Lee is very, very good at what she does. She uh, specializes in working with uh, people who are very traumatized. My friend has the information the police need, locked away in her fear. But Lee Hammond is the type of person who can release painful memories. We asked Lee to come to the police department, and she interviewed her friend and came out with a much better composite, which was released to the media. My killer has a face now, 
so the whole world can see what evil really looks like. But there are others who have seen his face before. About three or four months into the investigation, we got an initial lead on a James Strader, who looked a lot like the composite. On the day of the uh, murder, he was working at uh, Auto Repair Garage. The, uh, the owner of the garage explained that it was a two-person two operation and uh, was confident uh, Strader could not be involved in the homicide. Some people's alibis are airtight. Others are full of giant holes. For the detectives on my case, the hardest part is knowing the difference. Murder was a stranger in my town until a stranger murdered me. We just needed to catch this guy. Uh, we did not want him to victimize anyone else. Now the police are hunting my killer the way he hunted me. Early on in the investigation, we had um, an individual that uh, resembled our composite, and his name was James Strader. And we're able to determine that he had an alibi at the time. The alibi seemed to be strong, and uh, Mr. Strader was eliminated uh, in the investigation. Not everything that people tell the police is true. But I don't know anyone who would willingly lie for a killer. But then again, you never know. Later in the investigation, uh, Mr. Strader uh, appeared on our radar screen again. He had kidnapped a girl from southern Kansas, drove her up here, uh, and had raped her. We decided that uh, we would, again, look at him as a possible suspect because of his recent activity. Not only did he really look like the person that we were looking for, but he had a history of abusing women, and he became a real person of interest because he took off running. My killer is running free, free to kill again if he wants, but his time on the run will end soon. The media in the Kansas City area uh, really ran with the fact that he was a suspect in the Alley Kemp case and the fact that we didn't know where he was. He eventually was located in Utah. I get this call from the reporter and he's like, Lee, we've got him. They caught him in Utah. He looks exactly like the composite. When they called and said, nope, I could not believe my ears. Everybody was just absolutely certain. I went through that a couple of times, thinking we had him. It's highs and lows. The more I got to know Roger, um, the more of his personal strength and character came out. And he became like the spokesperson for every father out there. The man who murdered me had it all figured out. He thought he could take my life and then just get on with his. But he was wrong, because my killer hadn't met my dad. Roger, throughout the uh, investigation, was extremely afraid that the, the case would go cold. And he came up with some very new and innovative ideas to keep the investigation uh, in the public eye. I was driving down the interstate, and I, I saw a billboard. And I thought, well, why not? Why couldn't we do this on a billboard? You have all these eyes that are looking at the billboard, you know, thousands and thousands a day. The billboard was excellent. People would drive by the billboards every day, and they'd say, hey, yeah, hey, what about this person? And we were getting multiple calls on multiple people. Everyone is looking for my killer. Some have already seen him. They just don't know it. He may have washed my blood from his hands, but he can't wash away what he did to me. 
In uh, February of 2004, we received a, a tip that came from someone who had seen the billboards and said that uh, he believed uh, the suspect would be a Ted Hoover who owned a pool company and worked in the South uh, Kansas City metro area. We contacted Ted Hoover. Teddy Hoover had an alibi for that day and did not want to give a DNA sample at that point. He said he was going to talk with his attorney and get back with us. Well, he never did. When the investigator called the attorney to set up an appointment to get his DNA, uh, his attorney said that he had left town. I used to love to play hide and seek when I was little. But once we grow up, none of us can hide from what we really are. Especially the man who murdered me. I'm far away from my family, but I can still feel their love. And my killer, he haunts all of us. It won't be long now, though, till he's right where he's supposed to be. We couldn't locate Teddy Hoover anywhere in the country. And it kind of fell into a, uh, a dead lead. It wasn't cleared. We couldn't find him. And so we moved on. Then, I think it was in like August or September of 2004, got a third call on Mr. Hoover. And on this one, they gave us uh, a name of a girlfriend that he lived with. So we were able to locate her and that she was living in uh, Connecticut. The U.S. Postal Service were able to determine that an individual by the name of Benjamin Appleby was receiving mail at the residence in Connecticut. And that's when we start putting things together. Solving a murder is like a big puzzle. If you put all the right pieces together, it can lead you straight to the killer. So we were very confident that they were one and the same. Teddy Hoover and Ben Appleby. The Connecticut State Police were able to run Ben Appleby, and he showed a history of lewd and lascivious activity, and he had a warrant for that, so we knew they could arrest him on that warrant. I don't think anyone ever really changes unless they truly want to. So even if we change our hair, our looks, or even our name, we're really still the same. And evil is still evil, no matter what it's called. All of us had a real good feeling about, about this suspect, that he was going to be our guy. We'd call Connecticut and say, if you guys could arrest him, and then we'll, we'll talk with him. Some predators like to brag about what they've done. Others hang on tight to their dark secrets. But the police know that if you're real clever, you can play them at their own game. We got a good game plan. We had crime scene photos. We had our timeline. Uh, we had all kinds of things. And we brought him in, and he immediately, his eyes fixed on the link chart. And he, uh, he just couldn't take his eyes off it. It's hard to see your handiwork right in front of you, isn't it, Benjamin? Seeing just what you did almost makes you want to cry. And at that point, he just kind of dropped his head in his hands, and then he just basically blurted out he killed her. Allie was in the pump room. No, I, don't, I just hit on her, man. She was okay. good looking. I was blocking the doorway. She rejected me. She pushed me back. I, I just lost it. Mr. Appleby's a very strong guy. He's been to prison. He uh, uh, was a wrestler in high school. He knows how to fight. He just overpowered her. I once saw a cat kill a bird just for fun. He stalked her, attacked her, and killed her, even though she hadn't done anything wrong. I know it's the way of nature, but it's not the way of humanity. But I hit her, man. I kept hitting her, even. And he said after she was unconscious that he went to the first aid kit to get some lubrication for himself and uh, was trying to get himself aroused, but he couldn't. I don't know why the f I did it. I, I killed her. I, uh, and what happened? I, I strangled her, I guess. 
killed her so he wouldn't have a witness and he wouldn't go to jail again. Allie, the most beautiful, innocent, sweetest thing, and did absolutely nothing to deserve this. Roger was such a devoted father. We may never solve this crime without Roger, to be honest with you. Uh, from the billboards, that was Roger's idea uh, to getting all that exposure out there, the media coverage, and um, Roger uh, just never gave up. It was almost well, I wanted this guy, and uh, I'd made a determination that he had started to fight with Allie, but I was going to finish it. But was gone in the breath of a sigh. I'll always be my dad's little princess, even though I lost my happily ever after. And because my dad helped catch my killer before he killed again, someone else's little princess will get to have her fairy tale ending. Some people say I had a charmed life. I remember My family loved me. We lived in a nice house. I had everything I wanted. So I guess maybe my life was like a fairy tale. Until a monster stole my happy ending. And nobody knows who he is. But me. I don't think anyone is ever really ready to die. At 19, I sure wasn't. The uh, day Allie was born, it was the happiest and I felt the luckiest day of my life. And I called her Princess. Allie was his little princess, you know, um, a princess in the most beautiful way because she was so kind and so sweet. She adored her parents. I had big plans for my life. Finish college, travel the world. There was so much I wanted to see and do. We'd felt for years that Allie was going to make a difference in this world. But when I came home for summer after my freshman year in college, I had no idea it would be the last summer of my life. <laughs> Allie and her two younger brothers all worked at the local neighborhood swimming pool. On June 18th, it was kind of cloudy and overcast, and there wasn't really anyone at the pool. The sun was a coward that day. It just didn't want to come out after the morning rain. Funny, though, you'd never think that just because the sky is gloomy, it means you're going to die. She made a phone call at approximately 2.50. And then uh, at approximately 3.15, a friend shows up. Our friend couldn't find her, but she saw somebody leaving. She sees a, a white male leave the pool area, um, and he waves at her, she waves at him, and she went ahead and left. She left thinking that stranger was a friend. He even smiled and waved at her. But how could she know that evil can look so normal? Approximately five o'clock, Allie's brother came to relieve her. And when he got there, her phone was still on the, the table. Allie's brother's concerned she's not there. He can't find Allie anywhere. So he calls his father, Roger. 